Hi, Dr. Robinson here with uh, connecting up and problem solving older hardware with a newer computer. So I have a Windows 10 machine and one of my students said they were having uh, real difficulties connecting this up, so they shipped it off. It is a Juliet Pro. It has a parallel port. So all those who have been in this industry for a while, you're kind of laughing. Uh, so you also have a printer to USB uh, cable. So I'm going to just disperse of the parallel cable. Just going to put that over here. And uh, any, anybody who, uh, yeah, it's just a basic printer, printer to USB. Okay, so now let's talk about loading it first and I'm gonna show you how to actually connect it up. Uh, so the lid actually comes off, so I'm in the front now. And if you go up about 60 degrees, you can actually just slide it right out. Okay, so, uh, and the reason why you need to slide it out and just flip it over and put it on the very top is because, uh, and I call these ears because they feel just like ears. They're the, um, where you put the sprockets for the paper and whatnot. Uh, on the very left hand side, you're going to feel there is a metal guide. The left hand sprockets and ears and, and uh, paper holders must be all the way to the left. Um, because this is also, it, you can also feel a hole, which actually indicates when paper is out. Okay, So that must be always all the way to the left. I am setting this up for 11 by 11 half paper. So my right hand side is set accordingly. You can easily, once again, there's yet yeah, lots of little ears here. So um, if you feel on the outside of the uh, sprocket holders, paper holders, you will feel little levers and you can actually just press them forward and they move back and forth really easily. I'm not gonna do that because I've already set this up. Now I'm gonna take my big ears, which hold the paper, and I'm going to lift them all the way up and when you lift them up, you're gonna feel the little sprockets, a uh, little, um, they stick straight up because of course you've got paper with holes. Now I'm gonna tell you, and this is a bad piece of paper and visually you can see it's all squished at the top. Uh, it's because uh, it totally determines how you're gonna load this and I found it out very quickly. So I smooshed two just to confirm how you don't, do not wanna do it. If you put the paper underneath the uh, metal guide, which you must do, and if you only place the paper at uh, the sprockets, at the top of the sprockets to evenly set them up, and it's very easy to do that, but there it leaves like about a finger width of gap. And what is going to occur is the paper always jams. So you're never gonna wanna do that. So I'm gonna pull this, the bad piece of paper out. And I'm going to get my good paper. It's fan fold. I love fan fold because I like all that auto feed. So I'm going to slide it under the metal guide on the left hand side. I'm going to put the paper all the way in. I'm going to show you how to form feed this. So you can just uh, put it in nice and uh, make sure it goes under the plate in the front. You don't want to feel it at all. And then you're just going to line up those little sprockets. Okay. I always line up the left hand side first and I put the little ear down, the lever, and I do it on the right hand side too. You need to really make sure they are, and I can already, uh, they're just slightly off. So what I'm gonna do is, and you can kind of feel that, you can feel the holes are a little bit bigger than they should. So I'm going to um, just adjust that a little bit. I can put it down. I can lift that uh, ear up and I can just, just tap it and then press it back nice and solid and oh, much, much better fit. So you really wanna make sure that paper is square in because once again, it will jam if it is not. Then you're gonna take your lid and 60 degrees and that lid, <laughs> sure that lid just slides right on. Yeah, there you go. Yep, got it and down. Okay, so, um, you will want to set this up. So I'm going to just go through and how uh, you set it up. And I'm not going to plug it into the computer yet because you actually want to set your computer up correctly before you plug it in. Okay. So on the right hand side, huge keypad. Uh, there are so many configurations you can do to this. So what you want to do 
is find one, stick to one, and keep it there until you really truly understand how to operate all of these commands because it is it is endless and it is infinite. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna reach it on my right hand in the back. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it on. The printer is ready to run on the USB port. Yep. And the printer is ready to run on the USB port. There is a command to set it up for the parallel. I'm not going to tell you that because uh, that's a whole other whole other lesson. Uh, and it's just faster to do printer to USB. OK, so the first thing you want to do is uh, OL, top right hand corner, offline. And you always want to turn it offline before you do any configuration. So I'm going to turn it offline. The printer is offline. And I'm going to set it to my uh, 11 by 11 and a half p uh, piece of paper. So I'm going to do 0 0.3 E. Menu number three, enter selection. OK, now I need to enter my selection, which is going to be 1.1 1 .1. 1. E is enter. Taking the current settings in the program. OK, and the printer is being reset. And now it's being reset. And actually, it's just being set to what it was before. It's just confirming that. The printer is ready to run on the USB port. Okay, so the feedback is just really, really nice. So the next thing you want to do is you want to set it. You know, we scoot the scoot it, the scoot the paper all the way in. You want to do two E, and it's going to set it. It's going to align the paper exactly the way it needs to be. Two E. Okay, it immediately went right back online, so I need to turn it offline again. The printer is offline. Offline now. Two enter. Okay, lines it up. And that's what you want to do. And the paper won't jam that way. Uh, like I said, if that paper is not all the way in, it will jam and you will have lots of fun undoing that. So those are the basics. Now, you're not going to do the offline, the 0.3 enter, the 1.1 enter. Once you set that, you're good to go for your paper. Uh, top of form, you're going to do a lot. You're just going to do offline, you're going to do 2E, and it sets the top of form of paper. OK, this is all ready to go. So now I'm going to grab my cable here. Okay, I already have it plugged in because of course I've already set this up. Uh, so now let me go ahead and share my screen so you can see what I'm doing online. Let me go ahead and do it all S. And probably don't have a lot of computer sound there, but I'm going to share my screen. Let's see which one I want to send. Okay, yeah, we'll do screen one. Okay, here we are. Okay, so now what you're going to want to do is hit your Windows key and you're going to want to type in printer and you're going to here add a printer or a scanner if you're using a screen reader and hit enter on that. You move that into view. And here we are. Okay, and the first option is add a printer or a scanner and you're going to go ahead and enter. And the reason why it doesn't make a difference whether you plug it in or not because you have to set this up based on you know what you don't have to download any drivers or anything like that this is just is what it is so i'm going to hit enter on add a printer it will not find it because this is older so you just need to let it populate for a while and then you can tab to the printer that i want isn't listed we're going to just click on that or you can tab to it and hit enter you're going to get lots of options my printer is a little older blah, blah 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 just go all the way down the radial buttons all the way down to add a local printer or a network, it's a local printer. This is directly, anything that's directly plugged into your computer is called a local, and this is a local printer. I'm gonna go ahead and click to next. It's gonna ask me, how do I wanna use this? Now, LPT1 is a very typical parallel point. I actually, a port, I actually want you to just keep it at LPT1 printer port, and then I'm gonna show you how to change it. Actually, go ahead and use the drop-down menu. Uh, so I'm gonna skip a step. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to troubleshoot based on your computer, but this typically should work right here. Go all the way down to USB 001 virtual printer port. Now, the reason why that's showing up is because, um, yeah, I'm going to unplug it and I'm going to show you. It won't change. Okay. And it's still there. So that is my default USB 001. Once you use a particular port, that is the port you always want to use. Do not change your USB port. So if you're on a laptop, pick a port and keep it. And that really is true for most embossers if you don't want to have any issues. We're just going to go ahead and go to USB 1 because once again, we're doing printer 
to USB and I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Okay, so then you get install the printer driver. You're on the manufacturer, you're just going to click generic, you tab over and you're going to uh, select generic text only. And you're gonna go ahead and tab to next. And it says, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna use the driver that's in Curly installed? No, don't, I don't care if it's recommended. You're going to replace the current driver because you've probably plugged other things into that USB and you really need to just give it to your embosser. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're going to replace it, the current driver and next. And then go ahead and name it generic text only, or uh, let's go ahead and name it. Mm, how about Daisy Flower? <laughs> oh, and I misspelled Daisy. Oh, well, that's good. Okay, so it built my printer and it's gonna ask you, do you wanna share it? You do not. Uh, embossers don't like to share, so don't share it. You always must set it as your default printer. Do not print a test page and you're going to go ahead and finish, okay? Now, once it builds, you want to go ahead and find it. There's my generic text only printer. Uh, and I did call mine Daisy and it replaced it. Ah, poo. <laughs> I love it. Okay, that's hilarious. Okay, so here's my uh, generic text only. I'm going to go ahead and click manage that. And I'm just going to make sure it is set as default on this. And it's because I plugged it back in. At this point, you want to plug it in to your USB port port. Uh, just run Troubleshooter just to make sure you don't have anything in the printer queue. So we're just going to quickly run Troubleshooter, make sure everything is cleared out of the queue or the cache or whatever your computer wants to call your printer options. Yes, and I did. I did have something in there. We're going to go ahead and get rid of it and clean it up. And it's just going to take you through all your schooler service settings and everything else. Okay, Daisy Flower is not the default printer and it fixed that Daisy Flower. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and close. So now remember when we go into your, and whether it's Braille Blaster or Duxbury, I've got it on both of my machines. I mean, I've got both on this machine, but I'm just going to go into Duxbury. It's all set up uh, the same way. Well, I'll show you. Uh, in Braille Blaster, of course, you have to go to your settings, embosser settings, and set this up. And here, we're going to go to global, Alt-G to global, embosser setup. Okay, uh, I named it Pro last time. If I wanted to add a new, which I'm going to go ahead and do, actually, I'm just going to go modify settings so you can actually see it. So uh, you would add new, and you would pick uh, your daisy. And it's the embosser model is enabling Juliet Pro. You tab setup name. Uh, the other one would be Daisy Flower. And actually, I'm going to have to change this now that uh, I'm thinking about this because we selected Daisy Flower as our default. There we go, Daisy Flower. Uh, so when you tap through output options, you're going to send to printer Daisy Flower since I've just redone all of this and click OK. And uh, the characters per line is 40 and 25. Once again, if you change your paper, you have to do something else. In Boston Interport, if you want to, I'm going to go ahead and tab to that or just take your mouse and unclick that and OK. Now, anytime you make any changes, you must go to global. Uh, to make a global change. If you start a document, then you can go to document. That will change it. But I'm going to do control N right now for a new document. Print, just so you can see those options. Uh, typically, I would tab to the list view and go to Banna, um, but basic is fine. I'm just going to enter on this. And this is a test. Okay, control T to translate and control E to emboss. Okay, and enter. And Beautiful. Okay, now we've uh, got that embossed out. What you want to do is offline. offline. You want to form feed so it moves it forward so you can actually rip off the paper. Okay, and get up. Go ahead and rip off the paper. And remember what I told you about uh, realigning it, just to make sure it should still be offline, but I heard it beep also, so I always double check it offline. Online. online. Offline. offline and remember 2E and it sets it to top of paper and you the is online. are ready to emboss again and there is my beautiful grill oh we love it okay and that is how you troubleshoot older hardware with newer hardware and software
And that's how you fix your computers and imposters. Okay, talk to you later. See you online for more lessons.